السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وإن خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, the Lord of the worlds, our Creator, our Master. And peace and blessings be upon prophets and messengers of Allah. All the prophets and messengers of Allah, especially the last and final prophet Muhammad, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, upon his family, upon his followers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, be mindful of Allah, as you ought to be mindful of Him, and let not death come to you, unless you have submitted yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us wrong the people who submit to Him. And uh, accept our fast, this blessed month of Ramadan. We are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this opportunity to fast in this month and to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a great time. It's a very blessed time. It is moving very quickly. We are almost halfway through the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this time for, from us and our devotion, our prayers, and give us more opportunities to do good things in our life. The life is limited, and whatever time we have, we should try to use it to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do the good deeds, the deeds of righteousness. And these special moments come, special days, special places we go, 
such as go to Haram or to Makkah and Medina and uh, Friday, all of these times, these are special opportunities to take benefit of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Quran talks about Hajj, about fasting and about Ramadan, in the midst of those ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah, there is one ayah. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ When my servant asks you about me, I'm indeed near. I answer the call of the caller when he calls on me. So let them respond to my call. Let them respond to me and believe in me so that they may be set aright, follow the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near to everyone. So there is uh, the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is general. There is no one of his creation from him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far away. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We indeed created human being and we know how his soul whispers and we are closer to him than the jugular vein, the life arteries. Allah SWT says we are closer to him than that. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُوَسْوِسُ we are closer to the person. Every person. Allah SWT is very close to every person. But that is the closeness of his knowledge. That is the closeness of his will, of his irada. When Allah wants to make any, want to do anything, there is no one who can come in between. No one can run away from the decision of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But then there is another closeness, another nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the nearness of love, which is the nearness of rahmah, maghfirah, the nearness of kindness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to those who do good deeds. And Allah answers to their calls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to their prayers, to their dua. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in one of the hadiths that he said that there are three people whose dua is not rejected. Parents dua for their children. The musafir's dua when he leaves and he makes dua for the people. And the third one is saim, the fasting person's dua. Allah SWT accepts the dua of the fasting person. If he or she is fasting in a sincere manner, because Allah is closer to the person who is fasting. And the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, because of the deeds of righteousness. So the more you want to be closer to Allah, the more Allah will be closer to you. In the hadith, the Prophet said, Allah says, مَن تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا وَمَنْ تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ زِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَاعًا وَمَنْ أَتَانِي يَمْشِي أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلَهُ Whosoever come closer to me, even a hand span. I come to whom an arm span. And whoever comes to me, an arm span, I will come to whom two arms span. And whosoever will come towards me walking, I will come to him running. That is the beauty of uh, our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds. Whatever our good deed we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to that and make us even closer to him. So you have to move towards Allah, 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond in kindness, in love, in mercy, in gratefulness. Rasulullah said in another hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am with my servant when he remembers me. Ana ma'abdi ma zakarani wa taharrakat biya shafatah. I am with my servant whenever he remembers me and his lips move by my name. So when you do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is with you. Or he says, Ana inda zanni abdi bi wa ana ma'ahu iza da'ani. I am as my servant think of me and I am with him when he calls upon me. When I'm out with Adani. This is uh, this closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This coming, uh, being with the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ma'iyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a special gift of Allah. It is given to those who obey Allah who follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ramadan gives us that experience. If we observe Ramadan in the right way, if we take benefit of Ramadan, we fast sincerely with iman and with ihtisab, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also seeking the reward from Allah, not for anything else. So fast is a special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan creates that bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be described in words. Allah knows the nature of this closeness, but it is there. We believe in it. We accept it. We believe in it. One of the scholars said very nicely, he says, القرب الذي تعرفه مسافة والبعد الذي تعرفه مسافة وهو القريب البعيد بلا مسافة وهو القريب ليس كقرب شيء عن الشيء وهو البعيد ليس البعد بشيء عن الشيء He said that the nearness that you know is a distance it is span from one point to another point. That's what you know, the near. And the distance that you know, the farness that you know, is also how much is the span between the two points, the masafa. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near and far without any space. So you don't measure the, the, the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by space. And you don't measure the distance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by space. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near and far without any space. So this is the closeness of love, the closeness of rahmah, the closeness of maghfirah. And the distance is when the person is heedless, does not pay attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not follow the rules of Allah, does not follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is very important to fast with the awareness of Allah, with the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said that uh, fasting is was sir bain al-abdi wa rabb Fasting is a secret between, between Allah and the, the human being, the servant. Because he said, other people may know whether you are eating or you are not eating. But no one really knows that you are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is your intention? How sincere you are? And that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, hadith says, wa ana ajzi bih. Every deed of the human being is for him, but a special fasting. Except fasting, it is for me. And I will give a special reward for it. And when Allah says, I give you a special reward, you can imagine the reward that will come from that. 
He leaves his food and his drink and his desires for my sake, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is a great experience. Ramadan brings the community, individuals and the community closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should benefit from this time by doing good deeds, fasting, praying, reading the Quran, doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also doing the acts of charity and kindness. Keeping away from all those things that spoil fast. مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ مِنْ يَدْعَ تَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابًا Those who do not give up bad words and bad deeds, Allah does not need if they give up their food and drink. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this opportunity to reform ourselves, to correct ourselves, to improve ourselves. Fasting should change the individual, it should change the community. The world is going through a very difficult time. There are many challenges. There is poverty, injustice, oppression, wars and violence going on in all different parts of the world. And especially the Muslim world. You will find that difficulties, problems. Those who are in power, they are abusing their power. And if there is any hope, any place, people spoil it and try to destroy that. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace and justice and goodness to the people of Pakistan. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring goodness in places where there is suffering going on, especially in Palestine. And the people of Palestine are suffering. Fighting broke out in front of Masjid al-Aqsa recently. And injustice going on there. People of Kashmir, their problems are going on for a long time. People of Yemen, a lot of people, millions have been killed and millions have been become refugees. And other places, Afghanistan, the difficulty that people are going through. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time in the month of Ramadan to remove their difficulties. Make dua. When you make dua for yourself, dua for your family, remember in your dua the people who are suffering. And do something. It's not only just dua. Dua is very important, but with the dua there should be action. Do whatever you can to help the poor and the needy by acts of charity. And do whatever you can by your words, by your writings, by your speaking, to remove the difficulties of those who are in difficulties. Speak for justice. Speak for truth, for righteousness. That is what fasting means. Fasting does not make people slow, lazy, sleepy. That is not what the purpose of fasting. Fasting makes people active, dynamic. That's what the word Sahaba were. They went to the battle of Badr. They had Fatma Makkah during the month of Ramadan. So Ramadan did not slow them down. Ramadan made them more active, more dynamic. And they were always good in their actions. So you pray, you fast, but at the same time, be strong in doing the good deeds, the right deeds. And in this way, fast becomes a way of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah, tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is good and Allah accepts only good. So good persons, good people, they are more acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people. 
whose fasts are accepted, whose devotion is accepted, and keep us on the right path and accept this month of Ramadan from us. وَآخِرَ دَعْوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنام سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الكرام Last week the khatib spoke about zakat zakat is another pillar of Islam We have Salat, and then after that comes Zakat. And then comes Siyam, and then come Hajj. So Salat and Zakat are mentioned together in the Quran many times. And that's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to say, Zukra Ma'an. Both of them are mentioned together, so whosoever does not give Zakat, even his Salat is not accepted. Because Farida, it is ob- obligation. You cannot di- divide, separate between one obligation and another obligation. So it's important to pay attention to zakat. Calculate your zakat properly. It is obligatory charity. In sadaqah, give as much as you want, as often as you want, whomsoever you want, that's sadaqah. But when it comes to zakat, zakat is specific. That is nisab, the minimum. If you, if you have that wealth, minimum wealth, which is about three ounces of gold or its cash value, and one year has passed on that, on that amount and anything beyond that, then there is zakat. And that is two and a half percent on that. And that should be paid at the end of the year, to calculate very carefully whatever cash you have, whatever savings you have, whatever stocks you have, uh, your retirement funds and all those things, you calculate carefully and then pay two and a half percent of that. And this is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who spend in the path of Allah, Allah will multiply that for them. مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٌ Sadaqah, charity, will not decrease the wealth. And it should be given to people who are designated in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, ayah number 60. إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقْرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَمِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا And it should be very carefully spent to those for the poor and the needy people. So, zakat, zakatul mal, is an obligation. And there are people who pray and there are people who fast, but they are very neglectful of zakat. And then especially there is a, another zakat called zakatul fitr, which is for the month of Ramadan. Before the end of the month of Ramadan, or on the Eid day, the zakatul fitr should be paid. Zakatul fitr is about one sa'a, about five pounds of wheat, barley, rice, dates, or its cash value. So we estimate about $12 per person. The head of the household should pay for himself, herself, as well as all the dependents. And that should be given before the Eid prayer. And it can be given during the month of Ramadan so that the poor people can be helped and they participate in the Eid celebration. So Zakatul Fitr, Zakatul Mal, um, other charities, this is an important time to remember your institutions, your masajid, your Islamic schools, other services that are being provided to the community. And giving sadaqah for them also brings reward, blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they should be held by sadaqah. 
Zakat is for the poor and the needy. Sadaqat, charity, donation, that is, that could be given to the institutions. Various institutions can benefit from that. And everything will bring, inshallah, the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as the community will benefit. So I urge you, I remind myself and all of us, that we should uh, not neglect this duty, this obligation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the reward and bless us. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala man tabi'ahum bi ihsani la yawmiddin khususan ala al-khulafai al-arba'ah Abi Bakrin wa Umar wa Osman wa Ali wa ala al-sayyidain al-shahidain Abi Muhammad al-Hasan wa bi Abdullah al-Hussain wa ala ummihima Fatima al-Zahra wa ala ammahi al-Mu'azzamain al-Mukarramain inda Allah wa al-Nas الحمزة والعباس وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بفضلك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم إنا نسلك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر فأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا استو استو استقيموا please make straight lines Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem سرات الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى وما خلق الذكر والأنثى إن سعيكم لشتى فأما من أعطى واتقى وصدق بالحسنى فسنيسره لليسرى وأما من بخل واستغنى وكذب بالحسنى فسنيسره للعسرى وما يغني عنه ماله إذا تردى إن علينا للهدى وإن لنا للآخرة والأولى وأنذرتكم نارا تلظى لا يصلها إلا الأشقى الذي كذب وتولى وسيجنبه الأتقى الذي يؤتي ما له يتذكى وما لأحد عنده من نعمة تجزى إلا ابتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى ولا سوف يرضى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى وأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله ينعم عليكم